This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the Sonoran Heat, the Cajun Savory, and the Discord can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code for one more week here until the end of October, one year, two zero at checkout for 20% off. That is one spelled out O N E Y E A R two zero at checkout. Be sure to check out the Mad Canadian social media platforms to check out where he will be this weekend. Mad Canadian barbecue company where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloop Guest also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company uh, is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. So what does all of that mean? Premium small batch. So they're not it's not some giant warehouse where they're producing, producing, manufacturing, doing all of these things. It's it's a small operation. Roast to order. They don't roast the beans and let them sit in a big bin somewhere waiting for you to order them. They're not roasted until you order, so you're getting a fresh roast every time. Veteran owned, uh, that that speaks for itself. You're supporting uh, a veteran who supports veterans. And this is a company built on integrity first and foremost. That's one of their big deals. Their, their coffee is fair trade. Their coffee is organic. And a bunch of them are uh, single sourced from specific farms where they import them from. So you can find all of that and more. You get free shipping on any order over $50. And like I said, you can find all of that at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com. What's up, YouTube? How would you like the game? Are you asking YouTube or are you asking me? YouTube. Okay, I was about to say, you're, you're jumping the gun asking me. <laughs> well, we'll get into that. Right now we're having a private conversation with our YouTube community. Yeah. By the way, but I'm a bad, we're, we're bad YouTubers. Like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Guess how long this episode's going to be? Over oh. under an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, we need to get so much better at that. <laughs> I really don't want to be, we, we almost hit an hour 30 last, last episode. So let's, let's get better and let's start by uh, rejoining our audio listeners. All right. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you, Jared? I'm doing pretty great. I, uh. I got my, my coffee because on Sundays, which is when we record these, on Sundays we drink coffee. On our Friday episodes we drink beer. On our Sunday episodes we drink coffee. Yes. All right, let's let's not goof around. We have a lot to get to today, and I'm really I don't want our episodes to keep growing in length, which is what's happening right now. So let's let's just get straight into talking some Buckeye football. All right. Uh, well, first, let's talk national news here. Uh, some big news uh, in, over in Alabama. Uh, their, one of their star receivers, Jalen Waddle, out for the year with a broken ankle. Just an unfortunate tackle. Ankle yeah. got rolled up. It's yeah. just an unfortunate thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, one of the most electrifying players in the entire country. Uh, an absolute difference. Uh, you know, you, when you talk about Alabama in the same way you might talk about Clemson or Ohio State, it's just like, well, next man up. And yeah, next man up. The next man up at Alabama is better than the starters at 90% of the programs in the United States. So yeah. from that perspective, they'll be fine. F- from the other perspective, Waddle is legitimately one of the best athletes and most dangerous threats in the entire country. Um it's it's unfortunate, of course. It makes you maybe second because it was on a kickoff return. Yeah. So it's like you see Garrett Wilson back there uh, taking punts for Ohio State. And you're getting excited because he's really good at it. And like, oh, man, we might finally break that long drought of return touchdowns. And then you see Waddle get hurt. And it's just like, 
Hmm. I wonder who else can return punts. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the other news here, and we'll cover more of this on Friday's episode, uh, starting linebacker for Penn State, uh, Jesse Lukita, will be out for the first half against Ohio State. Yeah, and uh, we'll we'll get into this here in a second. But uh, Ohio State, well, I don't want to say it's not Ohio State's fault. They weren't the ones uh, getting hit. Or no, they were the ones. They weren't the ones creating the targeting fouls. But the secondary for Nebraska is going to be pretty impacted by uh, the second half of the Ohio State game. They'll lose two of their best defensive backs for the first half against Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And if you watched Wisconsin Friday night, uh, (laughs) whoo, you, I don't think you want your secondary in bad shape against Wisconsin right now because they're a passing team. Yeah. Wisconsin, the passing team. What? Oh, Oh, man. We'll we'll get into that here. We'll we'll get into it. We'll get into it. First year. Let's get into uh, the Buckeye bounce back. Brief pause. We'll do music. We'll do music for for this on the audio only version. Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, let's uh now let's just rejoin our audio listeners. Ohio State defeats Nebraska fifty two to seventeen. Kyle, my final score prediction: forty nine to seventeen. Oh, that close. So close. Why does Ohio State have to have a competent kicker? If Ohio State had a hashtag college kicker instead of just a college kicker, then my prediction would have been dead on. So close. So close. So close. I don't I think we're in season six now. I don't think I've ever once nailed any of the score predictions exactly. I've been close a lot. I don't think I've ever hit it exactly on the nose yet. Mm-hmm. I... I thought one of us did. I thought you might have one maybe. of the years, but I... May, maybe, maybe one of us did once. <laughs> maybe. I joke that like we have a we have some dedicated fans, especially in our Discord, and they'll be like, "Oh, it's like that time you said this." I'm like, "Huh? <laughs> yeah, because you used to always say that." Da, 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 da. I'm like, the second I publish these, they kind of get wiped from our heads. So. Uh, other people sometimes know what happens in this podcast much better than Kyle and I, mm-hmm. but we're, we're not talking about us right now. We're talking about Ohio state defeating Nebraska. Yes. So uh, any just big picture thoughts right off the top, just maybe generally what's your, what's your feeling about this game, Kyle? Uh, offensive line definitely struggled with the running. Yeah. I would, you, you look at, you look at the, the two main running backs, uh, Sermon and, and Master Teague, combined for 23 carries and 96 yards. Yeah. Uh, one of our Ask Sloopcast questions from at Lisa Villas one on Twitter. Um, now that this year's team has its first game under its belt, what or who left you the most surprised? So the offensive line. Yeah. The offensive line. Um, they, did a completely serviceable job in the passing game. I would say the four sacks they let up, uh, you could in theory put on fields for holding the ball a bit too long. Maybe, yeah, I thought I thought maybe pass on... protection pass protection wise, I thought the offensive line did a superb time. And I would say pretty much I maybe there might have been one, but I'll I would fall. say like on all of them, maybe one you can probably say I'll it was say, on fields for holding on to the ball I'll, I'll, too long. I'll say they did good. I'll I won't quite go superb only because Nebraska's there, there's not like a killer pass rusher on the Nebraska defense. So I'm not I'm not gonna go like I'm not gonna go quite superb yet because the level of competition just I would never I don't care how good they did I wouldn't give them superb. But from a uh, from a run game perspective. That was a, that was bad. Let's, let's, let's call a spade a spade. That was bad. You know, a lot of people were talking about maybe how neither of the running backs looked all that great. Uh, but I just don't think they had a lot, a lot to work with. 
that's shocking. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a loss for words because I think if anything coming into the season, I think the thing I would have, I mean, not, not at the top of the list. I would say the top of the list would have been like the quarterback is going to look good and the wide receivers are going to look good. I would have put those two things at like my most sure at the top mm-hmm. of the list, but probably third would be, we're going to be a great run blocking football team. I would have maybe been like, Oh, we don't know what's happening at right tackle. And they are Munford. You know, we keep hearing that he's at a hundred percent now with his health. So, you know, but you have a position battle at the right tackle. You have a potentially not 100% healthy big man with back issues at the left tackle. If you would have asked, if anyone had asked us on the Friday episode, Jared, bigger concern, pass blocking or run blocking. I said pass blocking. Wouldn't have hesitated. Okay. The center's great. The guards are great. Uh, if you have any concerns about either the tackles, it's probably from a pass blocking perspective, not a run blocking mm-hmm. perspective. Run blocking is going to be great. Yeah. And it was not. Let's let's I mean, just the, the running backs average. It's it was right around four yards. It had been right around four yards a carry. So I see here Sermon 11 carries five yards average and Master T 12 carries for 3.4 yards per carry. So yeah, it's a little more than four yards. And if you combine all the teams together or all the runners together, fields, chambers, everybody else put together, Ohio State averaged 4.6 yards. I mean, you can look, you can look at the total set and like, Oh, Ohio State outrushed Nebraska. Well, Ohio State ran a lot more, had a lot more attempts than Nebraska did too. Yeah. And if we looked you know, and I don't want to say the second half wasn't competitive because Ohio State was not out to that sort of lead at halftime. They were only up by 10 at half. But I want to say that a lot of those positive pa- or positive rushing stats, especially like Trey Sermon being the leading rusher, Trey Sermon having an above the uh, above five or right at five yards per carry. That's mm-hmm. a bit like late game padded. That's that's some late game padding. Yeah, uh, I thought. Yeah, I, I definitely thought the game was a lot closer than the final score was, especially that last touchdown, as well. Um, but yeah, I thought it was definitely a lot closer. But definitely give credit to Ohio State's uh, defense too. Uh, that after that first drive, and we saw Buckeye Twitter kind of were, was anxious a little bit. It's like, oh no, look at this defense, and I'm like, just don't fret. We've talked about this number, number of times in the past years where you may see a team that have like a, a script for their first drive. Yeah. And if they execute that script, well, they're probably going to score. score. They're going to score. Yeah. And again, I, and I think we're as guilty of this as anyone where we're just maybe underplaying or underselling Nebraska. You know, we, we did say that they're a program on the rise. Yeah. And a lot well, of people are worried about Ohio State's defensive line. And I'm not saying don't be worried because I saw things in this game that should have you worried. So I, I'm not saying, hey, don't be worried about the offense or the defensive so, line. The defensive line's fine. Da, da, da. I'm, not, I'm not dismissing what you saw because what you saw was bad. But we did warn you on the Friday episode that Nebraska was returning all five of their offensive linemen. And at a place like Nebraska – like a place like Iowa player development is a bigger deal. Ohio state can rotate a true freshman right tackle into the lineup sometimes. And you can do that because you're getting Paris Johnson, junior level talent to come to Ohio state at a place like Nebraska or a place like Iowa, having experience, consistent, big, older offensive linemen is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, let's. I know. I know everybody's going to look at look at this game here and and show that oh, Ohio State struggled a little bit with Nebraska. But you look at the if you really look into the stats here, Jared. Yeah. We 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 talked about just a little bit ago about Ohio State struggling to run the ball with the running backs. Look at look at what Ohio State did defensively against Nebraska's running backs. 
their their main running back, uh, Diedrich Mills, 10 attempts, 33 yards, 3.3 yards per carry. Very good. That's a very good stat right there. But, but. <laughs> we, and we've seen this last year too, and maybe it's good to get this out of their system to see what they need to work on is the mobile running backs. You saw it with Martinez. You, you mean saw quarterbacks. We saw it with McCaffrey. Yep. Where they average almost 10 yards we a saw, carry, six and a half yard carry there. You, we saw it with Trevor Lawrence. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's a problem. Ohio mm-hmm. State is not doing well against mobile quarterbacks. This is now two games in a row. And news is, and newsflash, Ohio State has a couple more they have to worry about just in Big Ten play here. And I think that was part of the problem last year where they didn't face a lot of mobile quarterbacks yep. last year. Yep. So I mean, the first mobile quarterback they saw was Trevor Lawrence. I mean, look, we'll get into that a little bit here, but Indiana, Michigan, gotta yep. watch out for that. Yep, 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 absolutely. Uh, okay, with the moving the way, on from just, the running game, though, uh, we can we could just... Keep picking about real, real the running quick, game. 164. Am I doing my math correctly on that? Combined yardage between the two Nebraska quarterbacks. 164 yards. That's yep. a lot. It is. It's a it's a lot. And Luke McCaffrey, I think, has a great future in the Big Ten. I, I we've not seen or heard the last of Luke McCaffrey. I'm not you know, as far as being like a mobile quarterback, who's going to win you some, a lot of games in the big 10, Luke McCaffrey's that guy. He, he's yeah, going definitely, definitely to be lot, an impactful player in this conference. Definitely a lot different compared to last year when Martinez ran it for 15 times. So I'm trying to compare it to what this just this weekend. So uh, Martinez ran it 12 times for 77 yards last year, 15 for 81 yards. So roughly the same, roughly the same, but I, I really think it was Mark or not Martinez. Sorry. McCaffrey, who just taken out after his, uh, his bigger brother there, just how, yeah. how elusive he really was. And definitely someone who just kind of just, um, we didn't cover in our, Friday episode there. All right, Kyle, before we get, before we get maybe, because I want to, we want to get into our Ask Sloopcast because most of these are pertaining to the game. So they're relevant in this section of the show. Um, And I'm not, I haven't reviewed the Ask Sloopcast questions yet. I like to sort of respond to them in real time. But before Mm -hmm. we get down into that, welcome to Columbus, Jackson Smith, Ninjimba. Wow. Heck of a catch. I'm 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 going on record here. I'm going on record. All right. The initial call by the referees was that he was out of bounds, and I firmly believe that is simply because they couldn't believe what they saw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, looking at it, it's like, <laughs> oh wow, he caught that, but I mean, you saw I saw it was his left leg went out of bounds. I couldn't really tell the right one. But then as soon as that replay came and you you could see that I'm like as it, as the foot was getting closer to the ground, my my face just kept getting closer to the screen here. I'm like, wait, 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 and then you saw it just barely. It's yeah. very Michael Thomas like against Alabama. Yeah, where you could barely see the red in the end zone there. You could just see just a tiny bit from the toe and the white of the outer bounds there. Yeah, Amazing. Uh, he is uh, going to be something. <laughs> that's that's it. Like, OK, here's and it was only one of uh, two catches from him on the day. But it was just like, OK, everyone, here's a here's a nice little sample size of what we can expect from from this guy. All right. Wide receivers. Uh, let's hope Chris Olave is OK. Uh, he looks like he potentially got a concussion. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if Ohio State has come out with anything official on that yet. Not I, yet. They, uh, Day has uh, sort of taken up a sort of secretive nature when it comes to injuries, which as long as the rules don't prevent you from doing that, why? I guess why wouldn't you? But Kyle, Ohio State, their top two wide receivers combined for 13 catches, 
233 yards. Ohio State has, well, is it really, is it just me? When was the last time we saw Ohio State with like, yep, those are our two wide receivers? Because it feels like at least ever since the Urban Meyer era, it's been like this deep bench of ever rotating wide receivers. And like whenever we'd look at stats, like who's the top receiver in the Big Ten and this and that, we always just sort of shrugged and like, well, Ohio State receivers don't ever get on these lists because they always just have this deep rotation of wide receivers. But Ohio yeah. State has two wide receivers that like, cause and, and forgive us because we've all just been sort of drooling over the freshman, which is I think forgivable, honestly. And because they're, I mean, we saw what, what Jackson Smith and Jimba did yeah. and because like Olave and Wilson are great and everyone knows that like, that's not, that's not news. So it's not necessarily interesting to talk about. But just in case anyone forgot, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, good at playing wide receiver. Yeah, I don't I remember the last time I saw two Ohio State wide receivers look like such polished NFL ready wide receivers in a very, very long time. We're talking I think, like I think probably Troy the last Smith time, era. I was going to say probably the no, no, I'm, I'm going to go sooner. I'm going to say when we had the number 711 on the field. Number seven, uh, Gonzalez and Ginn. Yep. Well, I mean, that's Troy Smith era, right? That is Troy Smith. Yeah. That's what I said. The Troy Smith oh, era. I thought, I thought you said somebody else. My, my fault. Yeah. But yeah. No, I think, I think Wilson definitely found his role in that slot position there. Yeah. He's, he he's excelled, the new K, he's he the new KJ excelled, Hill. He excelled so well in this game here. And then Olave, I mean, you can't blame Olave for the one incompletion from Justin Fields there. That, that would have no. been a heck of a catch. No, Olave, to Olave took two big hits in this game. And I think maybe that's a thing that Justin Fields is going to have to be a little bit more careful with in the future. Again, if we're looking for something to criticize Justin Fields, we haven't 20 for 21. We have not talked any Justin Fields yet. Incredibly in this podcast, 20 for 21, just shy of 300 yards. Uh, over 13 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, did take three sacks. Um, the incompletion, I it's it's just uh, it's just a good play by the Nebraska player, honestly. Like Justin Fields put it where it needed to be. Olave made a great play on the ball. Uh, just you can't expect Olave to hit the ground that hard and hold on to the ball. It came up yeah. a little bit. Um, huh, limpy after that, uh, he, he didn't feel good. I, maybe he got the wind knocked out of him or maybe it just hurt like hell. Cause it looked like it hurt like hell. So that, yeah. that may I have been the, it. I said the only bad pass in the, in the past, his only incompletion wasn't a bad pass. His only pat bad pass was he was throwing it to, I think it was to Luke Rucker. Farrell. I thought it was Rucker. Rucker. Yeah, I think it might have been one of the two tight ends there. The ball that uh, very well could have been intercepted, but they got the pass interference charge on, which uh, I have a lot of Nebraska people following me because of everything that happened uh, this offseason. Yep. A lot of them were screaming uncatchable, uncatchable, uncatchable. Well, when you tackle the guy when he's in mid sprint right before he's about to jump for the ball, and we've all seen what Jeremy Ruckert can do from a jumping perspective. Yes. Yeah, it was catchable. And by the way, the the non-catchable rule, the, oh, you, no, that's not pass interference because it wasn't catchable. That's not, if, if it's a question, then it's catchable. Like the non-catchable rule for pass interference is only for like ridiculous cases when the quarterback is basically throwing the ball out of the back of the end zone to get rid of it. Like that's, that's not... It's not a judgment call thing. That's in a ridiculous case scenario. That's the ball is literally 10 yards above the, the receiver scenario. That's yeah. not, if it's close, then it's catchable. But yeah, that, that was a bad pass. It was not placed well and it was a terrible decision, but it didn't count. So nope. yay. Yeah. That was the one bad pass. I think all day. All day. The year of the tight end. Not starting off so good. No, no. Two, ca uh, two catches for the tight ends here. Yeah. Well, this is not the year of the tight end yet. 
yet. Now we did see a lot of double tight end sets, so yes, I we mean did. that's that's a thing. That's a thing. All right, Kyle, is it time to get down to the Ask Sloopcast questions? Uh let me see. Do we want to talk about uh any of the defense too? What'd you think about defensively for Ohio State? Uh, I mean we talked a bit about the defensive line already and how they did not look great. Um early on. Early on, I think it's probably a fair and and we saw especially that. in the second half they definitely much improved. Yeah, uh, a couple notes on the defensive line. One, I want to see more out of Jonathan Cooper. You know, sixth year defensive end. He was given the blocko. I want I want more out of Jonathan Cooper. Yes, um, that's that's my first that's my first thought. Uh, my second thought is I want Zach Harrison on the field more. I'm not sure why he, I think that was a guy who we expected to see on the field a ton and he definitely got on the field. So my question is why isn't he on the field more? And maybe that's a question that will be asked of Ryan day or, or someone else during press availability this week. Uh, when he was on the field, he looked disruptive, but he wasn't on the field a lot. Uh, but as far as the defense, I would say the entire front seven, including the linebackers. The only player who I would have or that I'm willing to call disruptive at all was Haskell Garrett. Yeah, especially especially towards the second half of the second quarter and on. Second he, half of the second. Okay. All right, you got it. All right, all right. As I had to, I, yeah, no. He he was definitely very disruptive. He made his presence known, uh, drawing penalties, like going through double teams. Man, yeah, yeah. There, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, jokes that you can make <laughs> based off of like what happened that we saw a lot of Twitter. Yeah, please, please going don't. around, guys. Please don't, yeah. please don't. No, no, no joking about what. We, we've all talked a lot about how thankful these guys are to be on the field because of everything that happened during the off season. Well, yes. quadruple that for Haskell Garrett. Um, I mean, he was shot in the face and you know, it, it, if as far as being shot in the face, it was the best possible way. It, it sounds, it sounds like a, it's like getting the best cancer. You know what I mean? It's like, well, mm-hmm. if you have to get, cancer here's the cancer you want to get and here's how early you want to catch it but obviously like no one wants that i mean as as far i'm just trying to state the obvious here not trying to make any jokes by any means but it's it you know it was a was best case scenario for him uh i we weren't expecting we had been hearing rumors all last week that he was involved in contact drills at practice so that sort of was nudging us towards him possibly being on the field for this game. And then the injury report came out or the unavailable report came Mm. out and he wasn't on it. And then it's just like, wait a minute. Are we going to see Haskell? Is Haskell going to play? And not only did we see Haskell, he was the only like truly disruptive player in the entire front seven. And yeah, uh, Pete Warner had a Pete Warner game where uh, he made some mistakes, but he also made some really great plays. That's just kind of who Pete Warner is at this point. Um, the same thing uh, could be said of uh, everyone's favorite lightning rod, Tough Borland. Um, he maybe is just a bit too slow to be playing Ohio State linebacker. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think he has great instincts. I think he has great leadership. When he sniffs out the play and he can get a good head of steam going, he's making plays in the backfield. Tough Borland does some great stuff sometimes, but I just never want him on the field during a passing play. That's just kind of where I am with him right now. I'd like to see, um, oh crap. Who did I'm blanking. Oh, it was Dallas Gant. Dallas Gant saw some field time. And I want Dallas Gant to see some more field time. I would love to see Dallas Gant, you know, if we want to play the tough Borland's a three year experienced senior three year captain card, that's fine. He can start the rest of the year, but let's maybe bring those snaps down to about 
average with with Dallas Gant, who I believe uh, would be his immediate backup. I think he's the one that came in when 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 we saw uh, when we when we saw Tuff Borland uh, limp off the field for a play or two. Uh, as far as the defensive backs go, safeties mixed bag. I'll say mixed bag on the safeties. Uh, I, mean, I thought they did pretty well. They they held Nebraska to what was it like 150 yards passing? Yeah, well, both of their quarterbacks are running backs, so let's let's not get too excited. Um, <laughs> yeah, we saw Sean Wade make a single play, which I think the only reason they even threw it over there is because they maybe misread it. Because it, if Sean Wade was in man coverage, he wouldn't have been anywhere near that ball, but he was in a deep quarter. So he adjusted and went over and made a play. Otherwise, I don't think they would have even thrown the ball toward him. And we didn't hear anything about seven banks or Cam Brown. As far as the passing game goes, uh, we would have gone that entire game without hearing and but they're playing corner. That's exactly what you want. You don't want to hear from them. Uh, the only reason we heard from Seven Banks is because he scored on a scoop and score. Then you know if you if you're gonna make one impact on the game, let it let it be a touchdown, especially as a defensive player. All right, Kyle. Uh, let's get into these Ask Loopcast questions, but first, right. uh, do you want to talk to our sponsors? Sure, absolutely. Med Canadian has been a has been a sponsor for us for a year, and he is celebrating our one year anniversary with a 20% off promo code one year two zero one spelled O O N E Y E A R two zero at checkout for 20% off for the entire month of October. And if you are missing that, you can always still use Sloopcast one zero for 10% off. What you got there, Jared? I, I saw you grab one. I saw I you grab one there. Uh, let's, uh, maybe we haven't talked about this one in detail in a while. Yeah, That's the two border. Yeah, the two border. Just a great seasoning. I know that Jared loves to put the two border on eggs. Eggs, a lot of breakfast seed has that maple taste to it. Yeah. Very versatile seasoning. It's it's maple, it's red pepper flake. So it sort of uh goes if you want to make like you want to take your bacon up a notch and do like almost like a candied bacon, mm-hmm. that's that's your go-to right there. I put it on my eggs. Uh, it's, it's overall just great. If you like that sort of spicy heat combination. Yep. All right. Grab one more there. What, what else you got there? Uh, this one's the mad hatter, the mad hatter. Yeah. It's a chili, uh, chili lime salt. Essentially it's a, it's, it's a suspension. Uh, man, I, I can't talk today. Uh, it's specifically like a spicy salt. So it is a salt first and foremost. Um, it's a finishing salt. Uh, you put this on. I, I Chicken tenders is one of my favorite things to put this on. But it's like I said, it's a finishing salt. You put it on afterwards. Uh, it, but it also delivers a little bit of heat with that red pepper. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's a spicy salt. And, and just to sort of curb that a little bit, uh, it's got some lime in there. So you get that chili lime combination that a lot of people really like. Yes. Be sure to check those and all 14 seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, I told you about why this company is so great in the first ad read. It's veteran owned, it's organic, it's fair trade, it's integrity first. Uh, maybe I didn't tell you that they're Ohio. Uh, we love sponsoring Ohio based products in this, uh, on this show, uh, they're out of Perrysburg, which is just outside of Toledo. If you are unaware and they have a lot of great coffees to pick from. If you like flavored coffees, they, uh, they have one called mom's carrot cake. They have the intense blueberry and they also have a mint chocolate chip. Uh, if flavored coffees are not your thing, they still have a, they have a ton of to choose from. I know I personally uh, just ordered the unicorn. Now what's the unicorn? And the question is, I have no idea (laughs) because it's essentially like a test coffee. Um, It's essentially something from their R and D kitchen. 
and just like little small passion projects. Uh, so you don't know what it is. So it's a bit of an adventure and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I also picked up a bag of the ride or die. It's a medium roast. Uh, it's a gentle and distinctive version of an American classic breakfast cup. Uh, it's a Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee bean with superb smoothness and flavor. So I'll be able to give you a firsthand account on that one uh, on the uh, next week's show. So I'm looking forward to that. And like I said, you can find this and a bunch of other things, a bunch of other coffees, mugs, other cool stuff over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Dot com. That's ironbeancoffeecompany.com, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Jared, let's get to some Ask Slipcast questions here. Yes, let's. All right, first question here from Austin. He asks us, after seeing the astonishing catch by JSN, at what point in our wide receiver depth chart would the best receiver at Michigan be? Oh man. Uh, Nico Collins not playing for Michigan at this point. Uh, I did want, they have some athletes at wide receiver right now. Um, I, I, some young athletes at wide receiver right now, but it's, it's hard to say because they play for Michigan. If I'm being really honest with you, <laughs> I mean, I was trying to tell everyone for years, how great people's Jones was. And a lot of people are like, no, he's junk. He's bad. He stinks. What are you talking about? I'm like, no, he's not. He just plays for Michigan. So it's, it's hard to tell how good he is. And now that I think he's with the Browns, is that right? Uh, and he's doing well, especially for a rookie. Uh, you're seeing how good he is. So it's really, it's very hard to tell simply because you're in Harbaugh's offense. And over yeah. the past few years, that's proven not to be great. I, I think currently right now, their best receiver is probably, I would say Ronnie bell who had a, who had a pretty good game against Minnesota last weekend. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Definitely, definitely not the top two, three could possibly four for Ohio state. Are you talking about fourth place or yeah. fourth team? <laughs> Cause I don't think they have anyone who I would put above Olave Wilson. Nope. Jamison Williams, or at least three of the freshmen. So I think you're being very generous. Hmm. I'm just trying to think you might, you might be right. I <laughs> I'm, I'm right. <laughs> All right. All right, next question here. Uh, Randy asks, what is the bigger concern from the game? The running game struggles or the missed tackles and defensive sloppiness? Definitely the running game for me. The the missed tackles and defensive sloppiness, I think that would get fixed. Uh, I want to say relatively soon, but those are those are things that you can definitely work on. The running game is definitely more of a concern for me. Uh, I would, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to say the defensive sloppiness is a bigger issue for me. And I say that because I know who this offensive line is. I know who this offensive line is and I'm willing to chalk up this bad game for them as just a bad game for them. And, and that things will be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to do that. The defensive line and linebackers, I don't know who they are. Like I, I know who Haskell Garrett is and that's great. I know who uh, Tommy Togiai is and, and he's great. Um, I feel like Cooper. I know who Zach Harrison probably is. And, and I Cooper. think he has a lot of potential Cooper. I, I don't know that I know who Cooper is. He hasn't seen the field a lot. He didn't look good this week against Nebraska. The linebackers we've seen for years and they've never None of these uh, Pete Warner had moments of excellence in the bullet position, but he's not bowling the, he's not playing the bullet position this year. He's playing more of a true linebacker this year. And I don't know. I've, 
I, I have a lot more questions about the personnel along the defensive side, especially when we're talking about a defensive line that likes to rotate guys in and out. So we can be like Tommy Togiai and Haskell Garrett are really good, but Ohio State wants to keep them fresh and they're going to rotate. So are the guys behind them good? What about all the other defensive linemen or the defensive ends? Um, I, I have more concerns about the rush defense at this point. Again, we have two safeties who are playing for the first time this year. I have more concerns about them than I do about the Ohio State offensive line and running backs. Only because I feel like I I know who the the offensive linemen are and I know who the running backs are. And quite frankly, I feel like you can pass around them. If, if worse comes to worse, Ohio State can just throw the ball all the time and it'll be fine. All right. Uh, from Stuart underscore E4 US vet. Why did it seem like Joel Klatt bitched a lot today? Um, here's where have my, you been? Where, here, <laughs> he here's, always does. Here's my issue with Joel Klatt yesterday. And I'm pretty sure this is in response to him being very upset about the play um who was one of the one of the young guys i forget who got hit i think it was jackson smith was it not who got hit uh and they ended up tossing the safety for nebraska on a on a uh, targeting call first off that was the correct call based on the rule books that was the correct call what joel Klatt was confusing was his disdain for the rule and if that play constituted the rule because he went from, cause the second the flag was thrown and I'm putting this one on Gus Johnson, who you guys know we love Gus Johnson was like, that better not be a targeting call a- after. So they were just already charged up and ready to go. Whatever the tar- doesn't matter. If the targeting call was the correct call or the wrong call. They were charged up and they were ready to go because they were going to use the platform given to them by Fox to talk about how much they don't like the targeting rule. And by the way, I have a lot of issues with the targeting rule too. That's not what's being discussed here because they mixed it up and they conflated the call on the field versus the rule in the rule book. So they acted like the call on the field was terrible, but the call in the field was correct. What they actually wanted to be talking about was how terrible the rule is. And I agree with most of what they were saying in that regards. But they conflated those two things. Instead of talking about the play that was happening and being reviewed, they went off and started talking about something else. So that's my issue with, with what they were doing yesterday. Uh, let's see from Austin, uh, the steel chambers deserve more carries, uh, after he had more yards than the other two combined. Um, I, that's not true. First and foremost, Trey Sermon had the most rushing yards. Maybe it was true at the time he asked the question. Cause I think this was sent before the game ended potentially, uh, maybe not looking at the timestamp on it, but I would say that still chambers looked better than the other two. Uh, I will say that I also say that still chambers was playing against a Nebraska defense that was either a not entirely made of their starters or B was incredibly tired because it was late in the game. So I don't feel you, you saw steel chambers come into the game completely fresh against a defense that was, like I said, either A, not made up of all of the starters, or B, was incredibly fatigued. Yep. So let's not let's not be like, well, Steel Chambers is clearly the best running back because he he did look like the best running back, but it was not an apples to apples comparison. Agreed. Yep. That being um, said, Steel Chambers looked really good and I wouldn't mind seeing him get more carries. So yeah. uh Maybe the question, maybe the question behind the question there, I'll agree with you, but sorry, Kyle, what were you saying? 
No, I was just going to read the next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, similar question here. Uh, Brawley asks, based off of the performance with the touches they were given, rank the three running backs, Teague, Chambers, and Sermon. Teague, uh, Chambers, or Sermon. Again, Chambers looked the best, but it, it's not necessarily a fair comparison. Uh, yeah, I would I would say Sermon Teague and Chambers for me. Yeah, I I the offensive line played so poorly yesterday that I I really don't feel comfortable answering this question quite yet. I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to jump a team yet on this one. Okay. Uh, from Austin, which Buckeye player surprised you the most, whether good or bad? I uh, I I'm gonna go ahead. I I think I've already answered this. Uh, you, Kyle, you, you want to go first? Uh, I mean, everybody can look at uh, Jackson and that incredible catch, which I can't, you can't, you can't uh, go wrong with that. But to me, really, it, it's kind of funny that I, I'm going to say it's uh, Fields because oh. of the accuracy, because of the accuracy yeah. he's been. Like every throw except for the one which didn't count, it was just on target, right at them, yeah. right in stride. Garrett and a lot Wilson of those th- a literally lot of those, fell down. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those throws were just right there on the chest, right there in the face mask, right in front of them where they didn't have to slow down. And, and it's, it's worth so noting. So precise. And it's worth noting, if we're talking about accuracy and precision, it is not just about ball placement. Because not only did those balls arrive at the perfect place, they also arrived at the perfect time. And a lot of the things like I know we used to give JT Barrett a lot of crap for in the past was he was always throwing the ball late. He was waiting for the wide receiver to look at him before he was releasing the ball. Accuracy is not just about ball placement as far as the, the height, the depth, the, you know, your X, Y, Z, but it's also that fourth axis of time. When is the ball arriving? And he was also nailing that perfectly. My answer was going to be Haskell Garrett. Okay. Not only we didn't necessarily even expect him to be on the field. And not only did Mm -hmm. he was he on the field, he was arguably the most impactful player in the Ohio state front seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If not the defense as a whole. Yeah. All right. Let's go through these a little bit quicker here. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Stewart asks us, were you worried after the first quarter or confident they'd figure it out with, with that said, is there any team we can't afford to have, to have a figured out in the first quarter? Uh, I think you're, I I don't like the premise of your question. If I'm being honest with you, (laughs) you're, you're a Patreon, you're a supporter, you're a longtime fan. I love the hell out of you, Stuart. Uh, we appreciate you making us say weird names, but I just, just disagree with the premise of this question. Well, I say th- the defense didn't look great in the first quarter. I, I quarter, grant you yeah. that. But the offense looked great. Um, I think maybe, and again, we're partially responsible for this narrative. I, I acknowledge that. But I, I think we expected to treat Nebraska like they were Akron. I think that was a lot of people's expectations. And again, we may have fed into that, but, at, but Nebraska is still like a, a good big 10 West team. They're yeah. in the, they're going to win. They're going to win games. Yeah. Nebraska is going to win games. Yeah. Here. That's a once, good team. Once they, once they, once they, get it figured out um, being able to get their running backs involved a little bit more. Yeah. I, th- I think they're going to be fine. They're, they're going to be a, they're going to be a, a good team. They're not going to be a great team or super team. They're going to be a, a good team. Third in the West this year. Yeah. I think so. Well, I, maybe second, especially how we saw Minnesota play. Minnesota was missing a lot of people because of COVID. We yeah. didn't see Minnesota at their best. They didn't have their kicker or their punter, um, which is a big deal, surprisingly, yeah. but it really is. We don't necessarily think of it like that, but it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so to, there's there's issues. To answer Stuart's question, though, I wasn't worried, as I said, like the first drive, it's no. more of a script. And is there any team that can't, can't afford to ha- wait one quarter? I don't know. I mean, we'll see how Michigan, Michigan's running 
attack looked pretty good against Minnesota, but I I don't think so. Do you still as of, consider as of week one? Do you still consider Penn State to be the biggest challenge on the schedule? That's tough, especially after what we saw there. Think about it. Think about it. We'll come back okay. to it. All right. Um, next question. You know here. what? We'll come back to it next episode. All right. Stuart here. Yes. Stuart also asks, um, will Nebraska have a shot at the West? Why will Nebraska be playing for the fifth, sixth spot? I don't think, I don't no. think they're going to be playing the fifth, sixth spot. No, no, no. Uh, they, they just aren't as talented as Wisconsin. Um, I don't think they're as talented as Minnesota even. So uh, they, they around third. Yeah, I would say third. Yes. Again, Nebraska, and by they're going to struggle next week too. So everyone's going to be selling on Nebraska hard. Yes. Uh, again, they're going to be missing two of their best defensive backs next week because of targeting against the Min- or a uh, Wisconsin team who's killer through the air right now. Yeah. All right, one more, one last question from Stewart. Are you confident Ohio State is a playoff team based on this game? If not, what what will they have to do next week to get you there? They I'm going to say yes. They 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 are, especially after what we saw from the first week, two weeks from the other teams when they started started late and all that. I think Ohio State is a little ahead compared to some of the other teams who started. I Ohio earlier. State's fine. Yeah, don't if Ohio State wins out, they're fine. People are like, oh, no, it's bad for Ohio State. The Penn State lost. I don't care. If Ohio State wins out, they're fine. Ohio State did not struggle in this game. Again, Nebraska's a good team. They aren't Akron. Nebraska's a good football team. Everything's fine. If you want to talk about struggle, look at Clemson, who looked not great. And, of course, they tacked points on at the end of the game the same way Ohio State did. But that was against Syracuse. Syracuse, yeah. Yeah, Bama has got had games where their defense looks like trash. The best teams in the country, the defense defenses are struggling this year. And if this is Ohio State's version of struggling on I'll defense, it. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Randy says, regardless, leading a touchdown drive on your first shot doesn't hurt. Oh, never mind. That is for something else. Uh, let's see. Brawley asks us. What do you think Nebraska did uh, schematically that surprised Ohio State? I think they had a bunch of uh, grown-ass corn farmer men along the offensive line against a fairly young and inexperienced, more inexperienced than young, Ohio State defensive line. Yes. Uh, Does this game raise, lower, or keep your thoughts on Nebraska the same? Uh... I'd say the same. I say the same. There's some things that I wasn't expecting, like McCaffrey. I think he'll be a yeah great weapon for Nebraska. And there's I definitely was surprised a little bit off of um, Mar- Martinez improved a little bit. He didn't really turn the ball over as much compared to last year. And that's when, and that's when Haas State just blew it away was just the early turnovers. Martinez Martinez did a really good job not causing those kind of turnovers, but yeah, I would say about the same. Yeah. Uh, let's see. By the way, I mean, I, I predicted, I was a field goal away from predicting the score dead on. This is the game I expected. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brawley asks us one last question. Why is it 2020 and we can't manage a camera pointed straight down the goal line? That's a great question. Mm-hmm. Did we not? Did we not have the pilot? We didn't have pylon cams yesterday. No, nope. I think this is regarding to a different goal line here, based on the, the timing. The Penn State finish, yes. probably. I think is yep. what he's talking about. All right. Last question here from Suncard: What was confirmed for you, and what was news for you based on the first game? Confirmed is how seamless and well oiled the passing game is. Yes. Um. And what was news? I would say I'm not willing to call it news because I'm not willing at this point to say it is a definite problem or a definite thing. But I think we talked about our biggest surprise in general from this game was was just the lack of run blocking from the offensive line. Yes. 
All right, Jared, any last thoughts before we go national here? Yeah, uh, going to talk again about Ohio State's defensive line versus Nebraska's offensive line. Ohio State's playing the national game right now. They're going smaller and faster, smaller, faster. That's what you have to do to compete on a national level. Nebraska is still playing Big Ten football from the 90s in many ways. They're still just a large team. So when you see their offensive line push around Ohio State's defensive line a little bit, that's partially why. And when you see Ohio State maybe not run or yeah, not run blocking well, it's because Nebraska is still playing like 90s football with their personnel, with their dudes just being yeah. huge. Yep. That being said, when Ohio State was able to pass the ball all over Nebraska, you want to know why that is? It's because their guys are huge, which also means that they're slow. Yep. So yes. a lot of times we talk about how strong safeties are now playing linebackers and linebackers are now playing defensive ends compared to the personnel we used to see like in the early 2000s and the 90s. Nebraska's not really made that adjustment yet. So yep. Nebraska's not a great matchup for Ohio State as far as the trenches go. Yep. And that's my final thought. All right, cool. All right, national games here, Jared. Uh, we'll try to do these real uh, quick here as we're did really we, did short we get on time Jared here. the Buckeyes question? Oh, yep. Go ahead. Uh, so the Justin Fields guy is okay, and will be a good manager for the rest of the season. Yes. Yep. Yes. Justin Fields, Sloopcast, seal of approval. All right, let's go national. Uh, we're going to need to buzz through these pretty right. quickly, Kyle. Right. Um, one sentence from each game here, all right? As best um, as you can. Okay. <laughs> Wisconsin, Illinois. Quick thought about it. Uh, Ohio State really, really, really wanted Graham Mertz, and now we know why. Yes. Ohio State really wanted him. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Clemson, 47, Syracuse, 21. Uh, sleepwalking Clemson. We've seen this before. We'll see it again. They're still yes. great. Don't get confused. Agreed. Completely agree. Uh, Tar Heels 48 to North Carolina state 21. NC state was fake good and they were always fake good. Yes. And the Tar Heels are a, a decent 10 yeah. to 20 team. They are. Yes. Agreed. Kansas state beats out Kansas 55 to 14. I don't care. Me either. Uh, <laughs> you want Carolina one sentence? Beat, there it is. Coastal Carolina beats Georgia Southern. Don't really care either. Coastal Carolina is not a bad team. Okay. For, and yeah. the Thundering Herd beating out Florida Atlantic 20 to 9. Marshall's not a bad team. <laughs> Wake Forest beats Virginia Tech. Now, this was a surprise to me. Uh, it's a surprise to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, um yeah I, I don't i i totally missed this um i one of the reasons why i totally missed this is because i don't care uh notre dame demolishes pittsburgh 45 to 3 uh someone forgot to enable the pittsburgh super weapon yes uh oklahoma state outlasts iowa state 24 to 21 not, not any more magic from Iowa State here, but this might not be the last time we see them. Uh, we might see this matchup again. In fact, I'm almost expecting to see this matchup again. I, I like Iowa State. I like Iowa State a lot. And I thought they were the better team in this game, but Hubbard is, is just real damn good. He is, yes. The Hoosiers! Beating out the Nittany Lions in yeah. overtime, 36 to 35 in a game of inches. Yeah, this was a game, I'm going to go ahead and say it, that neither of these teams deserve to win. Nope. It, if you ever seen that episode of South Park where everyone's tired of playing baseball, so they keep trying to lose on purpose, and then eventually the game becomes to see who can lose it at the end instead of who can win it at the end. Between Penn State's running back, running it in when no one was trying to stop him, and Indiana with 
22 seconds left in the game, just literally handing good field position to Penn State for no reason whatsoever. Uh, both of these teams, uh, Penn State, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> I, t- I, was, I was talking at Penn State all off season. What, what are you guys doing to me right now? We'll hear, we'll hear more of that in Friday's episode. Uh, Congrats, Alabama. Congrats, Indiana, for, yes. for getting that big upset. Yeah, Alabama beats Tennessee forty-eight to seventeen. It could have been worse. Yes, it it could have been worse. Uh, surprise final score for me because I thought this would have been a lot closer game. Michigan defeats the Golden Gophers forty-nine to twenty-four. Yeah, uh, it was it was closer earlier. It's uh. Michigan looks good. Their running, their running attack looks good. Their quarterback looks good. I mean, does Harbaugh a, finally have a quarterback? No, I'm not willing to like. Okay. Well, I, I don't want to say no, but I'm also definitely not going to say yes. It's his first time on the field. He's mostly yep. running it. We'll see. Yep. Hurricanes went out a close one against Virginia, nineteen to fourteen. I'm tired of the ACC. I've watched right. way too much ACC football this year, and I'm just done with it. All right. <laughs> How about the Fighting Fickles, then? Would you like to talk about the Fighting Fickles? Uh, just showing Dismantle. that they are the, be- the best non-Power 5 team, beating out SMU 42-13. to 13. Uh, That's... I mean, BYU has something to say about that yeah. sentence, Kyle? Yep. BYU beat Texas State 52-14. to 14. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. I think this is a great year. But to... I like, I really like Fickle's defense. They're they're really yeah. clicking. Really yeah, clicking. yeah, yeah. But they don't have the offense to compete with no. the actual big, excuse me, the actual big boys. Yes. All right. And the last game, yes. I, I put in here a non-top. Uh, don't you sit here. Don't I, you. I caught myself. Don't you I dare. caught myself. <laughs> Uh, just because it's their first conference victory in almost three years. When was the last time Rutgers beat an in-conference team, Kyle? It was like middle to the end of November of 2017. Who, who'd they beat? Do you know? Don't, don't, it, just say I don't know if you don't know. Is that Michigan? I, I don't know. It might oh, be. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I it thought was... you knew and I'm like, hmm? No, I didn't. But I, I have a feeling. I know. I know Michigan lost to Rutgers not too long ago. But I, it's. I think it's been longer than that. I'm almost sure it's been longer ago than that. Probably, probably. But um, yeah, Rutgers though, Jared. Rutgers beating out Sparty. Beating out Sparty. And Kyle. by the way, it's 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 Maryland. Uh, <laughs> beating out Sparty. 38 to 27, the Kyle, fighting Shianos. I have a question for you. Uh huh. Did you watch a single snap of this game? No. Yeah, me either. So, because we didn't see this game, we have a question to ask. Uh huh. Is Rutgers that good or is Michigan State that bad? Michigan State's that bad. I agree. Okay. <laughs> Congrats to Rutgers. Great job. You might also beat Maryland this year, uh, but that'll be it for you. We'll see you next year. Shiano's moving that program in the correct direction. Don't get me wrong. We'll see you next year. I mean, all you need to know about this game is that even though Rutgers had 38 points, they only had 275 total yards on offense. That's uh, interesting. They had... The or Sparty, I should say, Sparty had seven turnovers and still lost by eleven points. Wow, seven turnovers, five fumbles, two interceptions. Wow. And you want to know what else? How Wait a minute. how bad? How many how, turnovers did Rutgers have? Three. I still a four. Uh, okay, so that helps explain it somewhat. But yeah. both of these teams are really bad. Is basically, yeah. I think, the takeaway. Michigan here. State. Get it? Takeaway. Michigan State, well, both both teams really looking at their rushing attack. Michigan State ran it for 50 yards total. 
It's like, oh, they probably didn't run the ball that much. No, they ran it 39 times. 1.3 yards per attempt. Michigan State. Rutgers not much better. 2.6. I mean, uh, doubling, but still. (laughs) If Michigan called Matt Campbell, for anyone who doesn't know, that's the Iowa State head coach who is an Ohio guy. If, uh, if, If Michigan State called Matt Campbell right now, and offered him a blank check, would he take it? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. All right, Kyle. Uh, brief look at the sloop picks. Uh, I carried water for the team and made sure that we did not lose out on t-shirt money and defeated Tanner Gale this week. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Although uh, technically you beat him too because of the tiebreaker, but you yeah. both, uh, you both only had to write. Yeah, now, I, on the other one. hand, I, on the other hand, carried water for the entire team yeah, yeah, and brought yeah. home three wins. Congrats on one week. <laughs> Congrats <laughs> on one week. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jay ended up with the uh, most correct. He had five. Everybody picked Miami, so we all lost that one. Uh, yeah, he had five that one. And brings him tied first now with the Mad Canadian with a total of 21 points for the year. Yep, yep. Uh, Mad Canadian, uh, I think the only difference between he and Jay was the Indiana-Penn State game. And not a lot of people picked Indiana there. Um, No. But he also wasn't alone. Suncard Mm -hmm. picked Indiana. Tanner picked Indiana. I think that's it, Jared. Yeah, I think that's our show. That's our show. Um, we're not terribly over for once this week. Uh, want to go ahead and thank everyone uh, for listening to today's show. Um, we uh, we have a website again, sort of. Uh, we at least have a web domain again. Uh, we uh, we went ahead and bought thesloopcast.com. And so if you want to visit the famed master link, you can just go to thesloopcast.com. And all it does is then redirect you to our campsite page, which has all of our other links. Uh, we also set up a bunch of fun. Uh, uh, they're commonly called subdomains, but that's not technically true. But no one else is a uh, computer engineer here, so they don't they don't care. Jared, shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if you want to see our merch, you can just go to merch.thesloopcast.com. Uh, if you want to visit our Patreon, you can go to Patreon dot the uh, we have a bunch of those set up a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory i think um what else do we have uh, if you want to follow me on twitter you can go to jared dot the if you want to follow follow kyle on twitter you can go to kyle dot the so i set up a bunch of those and that will make everything easier for everyone By the way, if you want to visit the Mad Canadian, you can go to bbq.thesloopcast.com. Want to visit Iron Bean Coffee? And you can't remember ironbeancoffee.com for some reason? You can go to coffee.thesloopcast.com. So I set up a bunch of those. But if you don't want to try and figure any of those out, or if you're not going to remember any of them, you can just go to thesloopcast.com. And that's just all that is is a page full of links where you can find all of our stuff, uh, including our merch store. I'm wearing merch right now. Uh, this is basically just a, an SNES controller, but with our logo on it. So that's a lot of fun. If you're a nerd like us, you can you can jump on that. Uh, if you want to visit, if you want to maybe support us by buying some merchandise, but you don't necessarily uh, want to wear podcast swag, and I. I get it. I do. Uh, Maybe you just want to wear some stuff that is just sort of like generally Ohio gear. You can go to 7071.thesloopcast.com and that will take you to our 7071 store where there's a bunch of cool Ohio based merchandise there. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? A couple of things. One, game ball. Do you want to, do you want to tell everyone what your Twitter handle is in case they don't want to go to the URL? Uh, it is. <laughs> you forgot. It, it's just Sloopcast Kyle, I right? Did. It is. It's just Sloopcast Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to do my spiel uh, uh, for your old one. <laughs> it's still there. It's just 
being handled differently right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yep, just slip cast Kyle. Uh, let's see. Uh, the game ball, Jared. Game yes. ball for the Ohio State Nebraska game. Not Justin Fields. Nope. Not any of the receivers. Nope. Not anybody on the defense. But President Johnson. President Johnson receiving the game ball. I thought it was a really nice touch, especially with everything that she did for the program in her early tenure as president. Uh, I thought a lot was a really of, a nice lot of it thing. pre tenure. Yes, that too. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, interesting stats that I saw this morning, Jared. Real, real quick on the game ball. Can I just say, I think it maybe should have gone to Randy Wade. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Maybe or, the next game. Or maybe G. Scott Sr. Or maybe one of the parents. Just Maybe all maybe, of them will throughout the, for, throughout the games. Maybe just like to the FP, I always forget the acronym, but the family player whatever association yeah. I've, i always forget the acronym but maybe just generally to that organization it should have maybe mm-hmm. gone to um may, but there's always next week mm-hmm. interesting stat here Derek. penn state this was penn state's eighth time losing in the past five years while in the top 10 so they they, they were yeah they losing almost two times a year while in the top 10, which is second most in, in the FBS, which that says a lot about Penn State as a program. Yeah, I mean, James Franklin said it himself. Was it last? It wasn't last year. I think it was the year before where they jumped out to a big lead against Ohio State, but then Ohio State ends up winning. And in the press conference, James Franklin says, we're very good, we're great, but we aren't elite. They're elite. We need to get to where they are because they're elite and we're not. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think who might be who might be the team that has lost more in the top ten. My guess Florida? would be Huh? Florida? I was gonna say Florida or maybe Auburn? Georgia? I don't think Georgia's lost that many. I don't think they've lost eight times in the past five years. No, probably not. Uh Oklahoma? Hmm. Oklahoma could be a good one. I think I think those I think those four might be a good. Uh, I mean, Auburn, Georgia, Florida. They have or three Oklahoma. of they have three of those losses in the playoffs alone. So there's yeah. three accounted for. That being said, they were getting into the playoffs, which means they probably didn't have a ton of losses. So maybe yeah. not Oklahoma. I'm not sure. Know. Just an interesting. Stat. It's it's it is an interesting stat because you have to be good enough to be in the top ten that often, but also losing games while you're there. It's an interesting stat. All right. And that's all I got today. That's it. That is it. All right. That's it. Uh, Tonight's ending band will be by uh, tonight's ending song will be by a band called joy ceiling. Uh, You can find their info down in the show notes. Uh, You can find, like I said, all of our, all of our stuff uh, either by clicking on the master link down below Uh, But the master link uh, is now just, you can just go to the sloopcast.com and you can find all of that stuff. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer and coffee, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Joy Ceiling. Hey, YouTube, can you hear my dog barking? No, actually, I don't. Okay. She, she's a good dog. She had the manners to go upstairs and bark, mm-hmm. which I appreciate as a podcaster when my dog goes upstairs to bark. My dog's just... You have a, you have a lump of dog in the chair. I have a lump of dog that you can barely see. Yeah, your microphone's covering most of them. Yep. All right. Uh, let's rejoin our audio-only listeners. And did all the YouTubers see the dog? By the way, I had a lot of Apollo in my face towards the end there. <laughs> but yeah, let's rejoin our audio only listeners. Um, Kyle, I think I'm going to I'm going to do Iron Bean first. And then if you want right. to come in after and do Mad Canadian. Yeah, sure. I'd once again like to thank Joy Ceiling for ending today's show. And of course, I want to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Let's see. Uh, let's uh, 
Hey, Kyle, here, here's a good one for you. This one is called Rage Against the Dying Light. Uh, it is a medium roast. It has notes of cherry, milk, chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose. All right. If you want a dark roast instead of a medium roast, you can go with the Fierce. Uh, like I said, it's a dark roast. It's 100% Arabica beans and gives you the edge and confidence to slay the day. Let's see. Uh, there's the integrity roast, which is another dark roast. Uh, and it is essentially the, the staple beer. It's the flagship. <laughs> I said beer coffee. It's the flagship coffee, uh, of the iron bean coffee company. Like I said, they're, they're, it's, it's a company built on integrity. They do fair trade. They do organic veteran owned, uh, all, all of that stuff. It's a, it's a really great company that we're incredibly proud to work with. And like I said, the integrity is their, is their flagship roast. If, and if you like really dark roast, uh, I don't think I added it. Uh, I think it's the fear, no evil. If not, you can find it on the website, but the fear, no evil. They call a straight up black roast. It's it's dark beyond dark. So you can also check that one out if you're in dark coffee. And like I said, you can find all of that at the iron bean coffee, not the forget. I said that you can find that at ironbeancoffee.com. Once again, that is ironbeancoffee.com America's local coffee roaster. This is a post of the Sloop Cats is also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has 14 seasonings to, to choose from from their website, Mad Canadian, the Mad Canadian BBQ.com, such as the Coffee and Q that Jared is showing up at me. It's one of Jared's favorites that he likes to bring up, seems like almost every week. Well, it's, it's extra fun to bring up the Coffee and Q now because... Kyle, you know the, how I'm going to finish this sentence. Mm -hmm. I'll let you finish it. Oh, I was, well, I wanted to let you, I wanted you to well, do it. Well, it, it has coffee from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I, I believe it's the integrity, but don't, don't quote me on that. But yeah, Iron Bean Coffee is in the coffee in queue. Yes. Yes. Also check out some of the other great seasonings. Brit's Blend, the S&P Bud. The uh, Ope. Yep, and there's the Brit's Blend that Jared showed. Uh, so many great seasonings. They go well with, obviously, like with steak or hamburgers, chicken, uh, salmon, fish, uh, even even eggs, too. Um, yeah, check out all the great seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. Promo code one year two zero one spelled out, O-N-E. Y E A R two zero for twenty percent off in the month of October. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. 